Hello geographers and welcome to this lesson from the Changing China unit. This lesson we're hoping to answer this question. China's Three Gorges Dam, a masterpiece or a monumental failure? In other words, what we're going to try and think about firstly is what is the Three Gorges Dam, but then we're going to evaluate the impacts of the Three Gorges Dam. And to evaluate really means look at the strengths and the weaknesses of the project. So in terms of how this fits into our learning journey on changing China, you can see it's pretty much the last lesson that we're going to be covering. There is a bonus one, which you may choose to continue with, but this is the last one of the main content. You can see how it fits in with the other previous lessons. We've talked about the geographical features in China, and this lesson will link back to that. It also looks at our population across China and how spread out it is. And again, this lesson will link to that. It, we've also looked at uh, the economy of China and how China's become quite a lot richer. Again, this lesson builds on that knowledge. We've also looked at the differences between the urban and rural locations. And again, this links to that. And lastly, we've looked at how China's economic development has had an impact on an environment. And clearly, the building of the Three Gorges Dam directly links to that previous lesson. So let's make a start. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you've got a pen, paper, ruler, um, probably a pencil may well be useful as well. So in your notes, if you can copy down that title, China's Three Gorges Dam, Masterpiece or Monumental Failure. Underline the title, pop today's date as well and underline that. So. Once you've done that, I'd like you to have a go at this activity. You're going to try and match the fact with the phrase. So all you'll need to do in your notes is literally to write a number and the letter that it goes alongside it. So pause the video now and have a go at that activity. Okay, let's see what results you got then. So you should have seen that number one, the Yangtze River, is actually the location of the Three Gorges Dam. And if you cast your minds back all the way to the first lesson when we did about the geographical features, you probably located the Yangtze River on your maps. Number two, this is the number of people who were displaced by the dam and its reservoir. Now displaced means they had to move away from this location. So 1.3 million people had to move when the dam was built. Number three, 135 meters is the height of the Three Gorges Dam. Number four, 32. This is the number of hydroelectric power turbine generators which create 22,500 megawatts of electricity. It's the biggest in the world. And number five, 23 is the number of years it took to actually build the reservoir. Now, last lesson, we saw that China was attempting to resolve a number of its environmental issues that have come about as a result of its rapid economic development. And one of the main concerns they've got is their air pollution. Now we're going to look at the consequences of one particular approach. They've decided to invest a lot of money in creating a hydroelectric dam on the Three Gorges River. So what I'd like you to do at the start of this lesson is to have a watch at this video clip. It says it's 60 minutes, but it's not. It's quite a lot shorter than that. But you hopefully have got a, a um, video question sheet to complete while you're watching the clip. I'm just going to quickly show you what it is you're going to be filling in. Okay, so here we have the question sheet that you're going to complete. You can see that in total you've got 10 questions. So if you'd like to make your way through that sheet while you're watching the video, that would be great. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. So pause the video now while you go and watch that clip. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance now to watch that video. And it's quite an amazing feat of engineering, this dam. 
but there are also a certain amount of drawbacks, which I'm hoping to highlight as we go through. So firstly, why was it that the government wanted to build the dam? One of the first reasons was flood control. The Yangtze River is known for flooding on quite a large scale. Many lives have been lost to flooding. And so the government was keen to try and control that. The other element, like we've seen last lesson, was to try and introduce more hydroelectric power. China has had a huge reliance on coal for its energy, but hydroelectric power would present an alternative way of getting that energy. It's also cleaner and it's renewable. And the third reason for building the dam is so that they could enlarge and deepen the river so that bigger ships could travel along the river, enabling imports and exports into the region. Number two, the Yangtze River in the upper reaches is full of rich vegetation, but also very steep cliff faces. And this becomes important later on. Number three, around about 400 people 400 million people rely on the Yangtze River as part of their livelihoods. The dam itself, question four, is estimated to have cost around about $25 billion. And they think around about 28,000 people have helped build the dam over the 20 or so years it's taken. Number six, what are the potential risks associated with the dam? Well, one of the first problems people are concerned about is the weight of the reservoir. It's a huge area that's covered in water and the suggestion is that it could cause and trigger earthquakes in an area that's already vulnerable to tectonic activity. Landslides have also become common as the water increases. Remember I said earlier it's surrounded by steep cliff faces, so its potential for landslides is high. Some of the villages in the surrounding area have had to be moved not just once, but sometimes twice, because of the risk of landslides causing a problem for their village. Number seven, what has been the impact on the built environment with the building of the dam? Well, unfortunately, in order to make way for the project, whole apartment blocks, shops, schools, even entire cities have been had to be blown up in order to make way for it. Also, factories and mines have been submerged into the reservoir. Ancient sites that they've tried to preserve have become islands within the reservoir as well. The reservoir itself is 600 kilometres long. Number eight, it says 4 million people will be displaced in all. What does this mean? Well, we actually mentioned this in our first activity. It means that people are going to have to move. And in many cases, people have had to move a long way from their home. And quite often, they've not had any money or compensation to help with starting a new life. Many people don't want to go to an urban location. And many people have always had a rural livelihood that's been connected to the river. So to ask them to move to an urban area is really quite tricky. Number nine, I'll just read through the sentences to make sure you filled in the gaps. The dam will produce as much electricity as 18 nuclear power stations and will save burning 50 million tonnes of coal a year. This will lead to cleaner air and reduce health issues such as bronchitis, pneumonia, lung cancer, lead and arsenic poisoning. So a whole host of positives there that the Three Gorges Dam could bring to China and also have an impact on the world. Number 10. What do you think environmentalists mean when they say the dam is an example of the arrogance of man trying to tame the forces of nature? Well, I suppose in many respects you could say that China is proud of having the world's largest dam. And it's very much a symbol of the supremacy, the superiority of the communist political regime. Despite the HEP, the hydroelectric power, and the attempts to tame the floods, though, the river has become polluted and unusable, even for irrigation. So in other words, irrigation is when you have piped water that goes on to agricultural land. So they're not able to actually use the water in the river anymore. So man is arrogant as nature will fight back, but not to the benefit of people. In many respects, people suggest that the Three Gorges Dam is an example of what not to do. 
So I hope you've enjoyed going through that video clip. I'd now like you to follow up with a few tasks on the slideshow. So let's just go back to that presentation and I'll bring this back on your screen for you. Okay, so what you're going to try and do now is think really carefully about everything that you've looked at in the video clip. You might find it useful to go through your notes again and identify advantages and disadvantages in two different colours on your question sheet. You're then going to try and break them down even further. What might have been the economic advantages? So things like the fact that businesses can benefit from cheap electricity. What are the social advantages? So think about the impact on people and why it's a good thing to use renewable energy here. Think about the environmental consequences as well as the political element of this particular dam. And then do the same for the disadvantages. So use the information from your question sheet to help you complete that grid. When you've done that, you're then going to try and bring it together in an evaluation. So let me first of all show you the grid as an enlarged version. So hopefully you've got this from your teacher, but if not, you could just draw out the grid as it's shown. And once you've completed that, it then becomes a little bit easier to do this question. On the one hand, the project is good because... So you're really going to outline the positives about this project. On the other hand, the project is unfavourable because... And then I want you to make a judgement. And I don't want you to sit in the middle. I want you to be absolutely clear which side you are on. Do you think this project is good? OK, or do you think, no, it's unfavourable? I want you to be really convincing and be brave and choose one side or the other. It's hard, but have a go. So pause the video while you have a go at doing those two tasks. OK. So to finish off, have a look at this evaluation that somebody's written for the last question. I want you to see if you can improve it. So it says, one good thing about the dam is that there's less pollution. A bad thing about the dam is that lots of people have to move. Overall, it wasn't a good idea to build it. So you can see that's one person's attempt. There's nothing completely wrong with it, but there's no real depth. And I know you could do it better than that. So if you were to suggest some improvements for this person, what sort of things could you add in? So the hint there says, consider the different types of impact, as well as using explaining phrases. If you can get things like this means or therefore into your answer, you're immediately boosting it to a higher level. And don't forget, look at that conclusion. What could be added there? So take a moment and think about how that um, evaluation could be improved even further. Pause the video while you have a go. OK. Now this last task is if you've got a little bit of time to do a little bit further research. There's a great article that you could click on and have a look at here that goes into much more detail about the pros and cons of the project because it really assesses it in great detail. And so then you could add a bit more detail to your grid and perhaps give more convincing arguments for question two. Finally, I answer this question. China is intending to become a world leader in green energy. What are the alternatives to hydroelectric power that they could explore? So we'll try and dive into some en other energy sources, maybe things like solar power or wind turbines. Do you think China as a country is suitable to explore those other types of energy sources? What would you suggest that they invest in next? So there's plenty to get your teeth into there if you'd like to try and take things a little further. But I'm going to stop you there. Bye for now.